at Giverny. Sometimes the conversation with my fabric is an eager one. We both agree on what we want and how to get there. This was the case with the Monet style fabric that was a series of wax and dye on PVC pipe. It became exactly what I had in mind, plus the rectangular length of fabric seems the perfect orientation for a gentle walk through the garden. Perhaps one day I'll be in France and can do that. I wanted simple shapes for the applique and found the fabrics I needed as commercial quilting batiks. Once in a while, store-bought is better than homemade. Chit chat. Two steps forward, one step back. The fabric was part of the early demonstration in the video, and once completing for the filming, it sat around the studio for a while. I knew it needed more work, so I played with the Thermofax screen, and the blue scribbles became a great offset against the orange of the background. It's a frivolous piece, and that's okay. Circle play. In grade school, one of my favorite activities when bored was to draw lines curling around the paper and then to color in the spaces that were created. I guess I haven't grown up yet because it's still fun to do. I love, love the white lines that were created with the wax and I think the black stitching sets them off so nicely. I used full strength Dynaflow as the colorant and I like the deep intensity that it produced. Crow. Often when I teach, people feel that white areas in their cloth means a mistake, not enough dye or batching time or lack of water or, or, or. I feel just the opposite. White can be your friend. It can give the eye a resting place. It can be an area for further development, or it can be an important part of a pattern. In this case, the crow seemed to fit well and since I had a thermofax screen of the birds on a wire, that crow seemed to be peering over its shoulder, considering the matter. When you are working with soy wax, consider making two or more pieces of fabric simultaneously. It will provide you with a variety in the same or similar color schemes, designs, or patterns. This is what I did with Crowded Cosmos, thickened dyes that were waxed and overpainted, one with large circles and another with sprinkles of color and wax. The second piece was cut into circles and appliqued to the background of the former piece, giving me an opportunity to add details. Eelgrass. I remember one of my early teachers telling me, if in doubt, do more. If you aren't sure about a fabric, then give it some resting time and go back and work on it again. The piece of linen in the background was waxed, dyed and washed several times until it had a rich, rusty patina and a luscious texture. I then chose a repeating shape that changed color and size to echo the pattern in the linen and additional pattern was repeated in the stitching. So remember that adage. Wild thing. Sometimes I work on quiet subdued palettes and sometimes not. This quilt was a thread matching nightmare. I decided to use threads the same color as in the fabric and used about 45 different spools of thread. Remember that when you are dyeing, waxing and over dyeing, you are creating subtle value tint and shade differences that can be indistinguishable from a distance, but close up. It might appear blue, but then you can see hints of lilac with a little bit of orange, or maybe it's peach. Oh, wait, I think it might be. Well, you get the idea. The design uses my favorite shape of circles, cut in half and reassembled. There are unlimited variations of this. I love to go back 
and back again to this kind of design. Pampas. Using wax in a silk screen sounds like a dangerous thing to do, but it's really very forgiving because of the washability of soy wax. Once you are tired of the design, then just a scrubbing with hot water and some soap and you're ready to create something new. This could become your next go-to technique. Remember to keep the wax design simple. Grasses, circles, gridded cross hatching. You are creating a negative space with the wax and thickened dye. It's also a way of working deeper into your fabric design. The base layer that you are creating offers so much scope for further development in applique, paint, stitch, or piecework. Consider working on a monochromatic or analogous color scheme. It's easy to muddy the thickened dye when printing, so clean the dyes out of the screen while working.